We all have our favorite gaming genres, but variety is the spice of life and sometimes you want to try something new. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the 10 best games to try a new genre. Starting off with number 10, the best game to start playing an FPS. We're going to go probably with Halo the Master Chief Collection with a, a side order of Halo Infinite. The FPS genre can actually be one of the toughest to break into, so much so that basically any recommendation has to come with a bunch of qualifiers because even the best ones can be pretty unfriendly to beginners. We put a little thought into it and we think that the Halo series is probably the best one out there for people who just want to try a first person shooter. Obviously we'd recommend the Halo Master Chief Collection and of course the new one Halo Infinite. I think it's kind of the weapon limit and the slower movement speed that make these games a little more friendly for a beginner. Of course there's still a lot of room for high level play but the experience is kind of less twitchy than a lot of the FPS contemporaries that it has and that automatically makes it easier to get into. The Master Chief Collection of course contains remastered versions of 1, 2, and 3, uh, the side game, ODST, the prequel Reach, and Halo 4, which is a lot of content, to be frank. The earlier ones are a little less player friendly as the newer ones, like Halo 3's campaign and on are kind of a lot friendlier on the easier settings. Halo Infinite is a little different as it adds some open world elements to the gameplay, but as a soft reboot to the franchise, it's also a really easy game to start with. It probably has the most modern feel to it and pretty good to get your feet wet. In regards to multiplayer, Infinite's probably also the better game to start with as a beginner because it's a much more condensed experience. You're not learning as much. Uh, there's a lot of players, the matchmaking is good, so it's not hard to jump into a game either. Like, uh, a big deterrent in, frankly, a lot of not current multiplayer games is just getting into games. So, for FPS beginners, I probably wouldn't recommend the multiplayer anyway right from the start. But if that's what interests you, uh, Halo is, again, a little less twitchy than other FPS games, and that especially goes for consoles. At number 9, the best game to start playing third-person action games. This one took a lot of deliberation, but the God of War reboot from 2018, we think, pretty much does it. There's a lot to talk about here, though, because the action genre is probably one of the widest out there. There's a ton of games and not a lot of consistency between them. Like, there's Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Bayonetta, Saints Row 4, Devil May Cry, Sekiro probably goes into this genre. And I could go on with a lot of different games, but just those demonstrate exactly how different games can be in this genre. So it's a little difficult to find a place to start. However, an easy recommendation, for me at least, is God of War uh, from 2018. It's sort of a reboot, and it's easy to get into if you haven't played any of the previous games. The combat is intuitive, it's very fun, the camera angle keeps things close, and it does not get too chaotic or noisy. In general, the fights are a little slower compared to a lot of other action games out there, and that makes it easier for newer players to adapt. Uh, another great feature is that the game doesn't force you to play on a certain difficulty setting to earn achievements, so as a beginner, if you want to go after the difficult challenges like fighting the super boss Valkyries, you can just turn down difficulty and you don't get punished for it. The entire God of War series is honestly really good for beginners. Even the classic PS2 games still play really good today and they're easy to get into if you're not used to action games even. They're accessible and a lot of fun. At number eight, the racing genre. Probably the best game we think to play in terms of that is uh, Forza Horizon 5. Probably really cool because the king of all racing games right now is also the easiest one to get into. The Forza Horizon games just overall have less technical controls, a huge variety of different events, and really like extensive difficulty adjustment settings. Uh, there's so much you can do to adjust the difficulty of these games, it's almost a little overwhelming. But if you're starting out, the default difficulty is also just a good jumping off point. Uh, that's the magic of these games, especially the newest one. If there's something you're struggling with or just don't like to do, you can just go do something else. There's going to be at least a few things you'll enjoy here, and there's going to be a lot of those things. There's really no denying that these games are dense. They throw a lot at you at the start, but if you're just starting out, the probably the easiest thing to do is ignore all that stuff. Just focus on finding what's fun for you, because Forza Horizon 5 is just this beautiful game that cruising around itself is, is 
a good time. And there's something that if you're interested in racing games, you will find and enjoy in this game. There's so many good racing games out today. But if you're new to these games, I'd steer clear of simulation racers because those are uh, dense on a level that Forza Horizon 5 doesn't even approach. Not that it doesn't have a lot of depth, but it's accessible. And I think anybody interested in racing can have a good time with something in it. At number seven, RPGs or JRPGs. So again, this is a very diverse genre. Pool of games to pick from, very wide, very deep. There are so many different games and so many different expectations, but we're gonna do the more like traditional split, the Western RPG and the JRPG, the Japanese RPG. For Western games, probably Mass Effect Legendary Edition. It's a really good collection of some of the most fun and easy to play RPGs out there. Um, probably a great thing about Mass Effect is how focused the whole everything is in terms of RPGs. Instead of each game having a sprawling 100 hour plus campaign, they pretty much all clock in between 20 and 30 hours uh, unless you really get into some side stuff you can take more time if you want but in terms of gameplay these games are not as mechanically complex as a lot of rpgs out there and if you wanted to make the level up decisions for you um yeah there's even options to let the game decide how the story comes out if you're not interested in that for most people, I think the choose your own adventure aspect is kind of the bigger draws, but if you just want to shoot stuff and level up characters, it, the option's there. Now, if you want to get into Japanese developed RPGs, probably no better place to start than Dragon Quest XI. It's kind of the pinnacle of old school RPG design, but built for the modern era. Everything is polished. It's got a nice mirror sheen to it. Combat, about as classic as it gets. It's all turn-based, just like the first game way back on the NES, but obviously with the sort of modern day improvements like auto battle and some actual tactical decisions to make. For a JRPG, everything's intuitive. The story's charming. The gameplay is never too difficult. So while it is a long game, it's also perfect for people who want to try out a JRPG, but don't want to deal with some of the frustrations that the more classic games, you know, have. At number six, uh, the best game to start playing platformers. I mean, if you've never played a platformer before, it probably doesn't get any more intuitive than Super Mario Odyssey. Like, there's a lot of absolutely essential platformers out there. Super Mario World, Sonic 2, 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Shovel Knight, Crash Bandicoot, the list goes on. A lot of these games can be kind of tough to get into as someone new to video games, though, because they all have their little specificities that make them something different. But Super Mario Odyssey is probably perfect for someone who wants to get into platforming for the first time the controls are just super smooth they don't get a lot more smooth and intuitive than mario uh, especially after mario 64 uh, but mario's movement powers don't get much better than this game and the real reason this game's so great for new players though is how open it is each level is a sandbox that lets you do pretty much whatever you want and they're not a lot in terms of limitation so if you're struggling with one activity you can just wander away and do something else the main collectible of the game the power moons they're basically everywhere and you only need a fraction of them to beat the game so it's rare that the game really forces you or railroads you into stuff it's also one of the most joyful and silly games of all time uh, but most of all it's just fun to play and just to be frank it's one of those games that has learned something from almost every notable platforming game in the last 30 years so whatever direction it is that you end up taking from super mario odyssey it can probably lead you down a path to any of those titles we mentioned earlier at number five, the stealth genre, probably the best game to start playing a stealth game is, of course, Ghost of Tsushima. Now, this is a genre that can be very frustrating and unforgiving if you're not accustomed to the conventions of the genre. But a game that does a really good job easing players into stealth gameplay is Ghost of Tsushima. Now, it's not even primarily a stealth game at first. Uh, slowly, as the game progresses, you unlock new abilities that make stealth easier and more effective. And eventually, like, stealth is all you need to clear out a base. The way the game slowly expands the stealth mechanics really makes it stand out to me as kind of the most new player friendly stealth game. The main character, Jin, is learning stealth as the player is learning stealth. A instead of throwing into the deep end like you're a stealth badass and you should know everything about stealth because you're going to stealth your way into this stealth situation, it assumes like the thing that a new player is going to do is hack away at enemies 
And it's like, all right, how do we go from that to incredible stealth badass? Another positive is that if you get caught, it's not the end of the world. Instead of being a chump, Jin is as deadly in a sword fight. So if you're seen, the game just continues to be entertaining. Ghost of Tsushima's stealth mechanics aren't like super deep or anything, and the enemy AI can be super forgiving, but that's kind of what makes it such a good place to start for people who want to try that genre. And number four, the best game to start playing survival simulators is probably Subnautica. Uh, like, by their very nature, survival simulators can be pretty unforgiving. That's sort of built into the gameplay loop. You're supposed to try to survive. Uh, but not all of them are quite so brutal. If you're looking for one that's a little more intuitive and easy to get into, Subnautica is probably what to try. The game's a little more fun and satisfying than a lot of survival games out there. Uh, but if the underwater setting gives you the creeps, that's probably going to be a problem. For me, I found the game really entertaining, though. The story gives you a strong motivation to explore, the base building's pretty straightforward, and the world is just all around fantastic. The main thing that keeps this one so player-friendly is just how polished everything is. Like, the menus are a common chore in a lot of survival games, but this one, it, they're streamlined, and they make it so much easier to do the things that you want to do. There's only three major meters you have to worry about. There's hunger and thirst, which are quickly solved, and then there's oxygen, which, I mean, that that's probably what's going to cause a little bit of trouble. In my experience, the progression's very smooth, very satisfying. But if you don't want to deal with all that stuff, there's just also a creative mode. It's another game that lets players adjust it to be as difficult as they want, which is perfect for anyone just wanting to try out survival. And number three is the best game to start playing fighting games, which we're going to recommend Mortal Kombat 11 for. The fighting game genre is notoriously difficult to get into, but more and more we're seeing games that at least attempt to bridge the gap between the hardcore fans and the casual players. There's a lot of great indie fighters out there with great tutorials and simplified controls, but if I had to pick just one game in the genre that's best for new players, I'd go with Mortal Kombat 11. Regardless of if you're going to go online or just want to beat up some AI opponents, there's a lot to do in MK11. The extensive tutorial system is really good for learning the ropes, there's a large player base if you're looking to go online, and the skill ceiling isn't as high as a lot of other popular fighters. With MK11, you don't worry about stances, hundreds of different moves, or complex motions that uh, they are confusing. Charge attacks, pretzel motions, stuff like that. All the actual fighting game moves are easy to input, and combos are rarely uh, requiring of the actual kind of precision a lot of other fighters do. Compared to a lot of other games on this list, there's still a lot to learn in this game. It is a fighting game after all, and it is a complex genre. You're probably going to get destroyed the first few times you go online too, but compared to almost every other popular fighting game out there, it's just so much easier to get into MK11. At number two, the best game to start playing the Soulsborne genre. We're actually going to recommend Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Now, like fighting games, the Soulsborne genre or subgenre, whatever you really want to consider it, is almost exclusively dominated by hardcore players. Uh, it doesn't have to be the case, though. While Dark Souls games can be confusing and kind of difficult at times, not every game in the genre is so unforgiving. For players who want to get into that experience without having to prepare uh, to die every few steps, there are a few alternatives. Uh, my personal favorite is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It, it's a game that's got all the hallmarks of the genre, but with a major difference, uh, an actual difficulty selection. All the staples of the genre are here. There's a healing item that has limited uses. You recharge it at camps. Death sends you back with a chunk of your experience gone. And the combat is pretty deadly. What makes it a little more forgiving, though, is that you don't lose everything when you die. And you've only got one weapon, which makes it more difficult to find yourself with a terrible build that's not working. Also, the overall story is possible to follow, which is oddly an innovation in this genre. It's actually a kind of strange mix of Uncharted and Dark Souls that somehow works despite being how incompatible those two games seem. Some people might recommend Elden Ring as a good starter Soulsborne, but if you want a game that has all the hallmarks of the genre without being a huge pain in the ass, Jedi Fallen Order is just a fantastic place to start. And finally, at number one, the best game to start playing survival horror is probably Selma. Now, this is going to be a highly subjective one because it really depends on what a person is looking for in a horror game. But pretty much the great all-around pick for someone who wants to start getting into these games is Selma. It's not too mechanically demanding. It's mostly intuitive when it comes to puzzles. And while the game can be pretty tense, the scares aren't overwhelming for first-time players. What really makes this game great is the story and presentation. Uh, Selma's story is haunting in a way that 
few games like at all, not just in the genre, are able to manage. And it's worth playing just for the story alone. There are real horror elements here too, but it's not smoke and mirrors like a lot of games. There are enemies that want to kill you, uh, but the game mechanics make it so even if you do get caught, you don't lose just an absolute ton of progress. If getting haunted by robotic monstrosities is too much to you, there's also Soma's safe mode, which lets you explore the game without the risk of dying at all. For a horror experience, Soma remains probably one of the best in the genre and a perfect place to start for somebody looking to get into these games. That's going to be all for today. Uh, your opinion is, of course, valued here. This is a subjective list, so please leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a good time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Fel. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.